سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد بن عبد الله الصادق الامين ثم اما بعد اهلا وسهلا فيكم ومرحبا بكم Um, hello and welcome uh, everyone to our um, How to Start a Business seminar uh, presented by the UMA American Chamber of Commerce in conjunction with uh, SCORE. Um, and here to uh, represent SCORE is uh, Lauren Greenwood. Uh, the UMA American Chamber of Commerce is dedicated in promoting economic growth and increasing member visibility through a strong united voice among businesses also serves as an advocate liaison in creating community partnerships with local municipalities and businesses. The Yemeni American Chamber of Commerce acts as a service provider by initiating, managing uh, programs which are responsive to member needs. Uh, also currently represents the metropolitan Detroit area and it's continuing to spread throughout the country. Um, it provides resources to small businesses and addresses their issues and encourages the involvement of corporate citizens within the community and provides a forum uh, for discussing topics of interest to the business community. Um, and here, this particular, this is our, one of our, on a monthly cadence, we always provide some sort of seminar. Just last month, uh, we provided information on first home buyers, how to uh, uh, invest uh, on first home buying. Uh, today's seminar will be on how to start up a business for entrepreneurs. So here to go into the specifics and explain just that is Lauren Greenwood from SCORE. Thank you. I don't know if you need this for the recording, but I'll use it. <laughs> Usually we just yell. Uh, my name is Lauren Greenwood. I've with SCORE for nine years. I'm former chapter chairman and uh, ran workshops for a couple of years. Right now I work on fundraising. Uh, my background is basically automotive. I worked at General Motors and then at Ford and then uh, for a machine tool company, special machines for nine years, and then ran a couple stamping plants around the Detroit area. Spent 10 years after that management consulting with a firm out of Dallas-Fort Worth, with, working with uh, the U.S. Navy, BNSF Railroad, Amtrak Railroad, Bosch Automotive, and many other large firms on process improvement. So today we're gonna talk about, could I, should I start my own business? And since many of you already have your own business, this is some basics that, uh, Maybe you can pass on to your friends and so forth uh, as discuss when you're starting a business, what the steps you have to go through, what are the pitfalls. Many people come to us, they want to start a business. They say, well, what kind of business do you want to start? Well, I don't know. What's a good business to start? You know? <laughs> so I'll tell them, where's your passion? Where, where is your experience? SCORE is a, all of us are volunteers. None of us receive a salary. We do this for the fun of it. Uh, we do have expenses for some of the workshops and expenses for travel and so forth. So uh, <coughs> we get about a third of our annual income from the Small Business Administration. The other two thirds comes from a number of people that provide us grants and, and uh, in-kind offices and so forth. So there's just some of them up there. We uh, this past year received twenty thousand dollars from the New Economy Initiative, which maybe you work in in uh, Detroit, you may know about that. This organization has pulled together $10,000 grants for 30 businesses for the past three years now. So what is SCORE? We were sponsored originally by the U.S. Small Business Administration. We've been around over 50 years and uh, we're a volunteer organization, retired and still working business owners, business executives. It was originally Service Corps of Retired Executives, but I'd say half of our members now are still active working, whether it's full-time or part-time. And we have some people as young as in their 30s. Uh, large range of corporate backgrounds. We have one gentleman who owns, I think, seven different restaurants. We have uh, one fellow has an online sporting goods store and a, a retail operation that he just sold off and he, he retained the, uh, some of the online activities, but he's very expert in online marketing for sporting goods. So what do we do? We work in three areas, low cost workshop training. We do workshops on how to start a business, on marketing your business, on uh, how to sell. There's a new one we just had a two part series on selling. We have a uh, three-part series on writing a business plan. It takes you through the basics of a business plan and then through the financials and after that through uh, putting the final plan together. Uh, 
Counseling we now call mentoring more often. It's for startup and existing businesses, for profit and non-profit businesses. We, we uh, you know, we take whoever signs up and wants mentoring, you do that through our website and we make an appointment with one of our locations. Uh, it's free service, normal one hour per session, but we do some sessions that are much longer, some that are much shorter. After you've been with a mentor originally, you may just work by telephone rather than having to come in for an appointment. Uh, locations close to you, we'll talk about some of those and we're adding some as we go, so uh, uh, a lot of different things there. Biz support, uh, for some existing companies, we put in a team of mentors and they'll be from operations, from finance, and generally from marketing. Uh, we're always confidential discussions. The information we have is not shared with anyone outside the organization. We only share it with mentors, other mentors we make it involved. So if you come in and you've got a marketing problem, and uh, you know I'm not an ace in marketing, we have several people whose business is marketing and can have it work with you. So we'll probably turn you over to someone else after the first session. We have our main office, downtown Detroit, in the Federal Building with the SBA. We're on the fifth floor there. We're going up to the 18th sometime in the summer. Uh, Oakland County Executive Office Building. Uh, we, had, uh, we have a mentor out there full time with the uh, Brooks Patterson in the Executive Office Building. The South Oakland County Office we had in Ferndale, the, they just sold that off and are tearing it down to build condominiums. So we're in a Renaissance church out there where they have a, a small office area that they rent out to people. But we have people there, uh, well, we have the office available five days a week. We usually have mentors there three days a week. We uh, have some other um, Michigan business and professional organization in Warren. McComb Chamber in Mount Clemens, Novi Library, Redford Township Library. We just opened an office in Detroit, the Northwest Activities Center, which is uh, on Myers Road, uh, right near Otter Drive and the Lodge Expressway, a very large facility. We have a nice office in the lower level there, and we're doing a workshop series there uh, most months. So let's talk a little bit about typical entrepreneur. Uh, we found through the years they're overly optimistic about their chances for success. 81% are confident they'll succeed. 40% decide to start their business before really knowing or analyzing the idea. And that's one of the, the biggest problems people run into. You know, after five years, 50% of the small business will have failed from the startup. So uh, not all of them will, uh, will be, they'll be out of that business, shall we say. Not all of them will fail, some of them will have sold off to somebody else, some of them will have uh, uh, changed the line of business they're in, but uh, in general, 50% of the businesses that start next year won't be there in five years. Uh, close to two-thirds think they have a competitive advantage that nobody's thought of yet, but uh, if you've been in business, you know you always have a competitor, uh, whether they're in the same business as you or it's another business that competes with yours. Now here's some of the statistics I was just talking about. Uh, two years, 30% fail. At five years, 50%. 10 years, 66%. Now, you know, they say a failure, but the, really those statistics from the SBA and uh, maybe after eight years you sold your business and made a million dollars. You know, they, that counts in there as being failed too. Uh, owning a small business, is, I'm sure you know, you know, I, I uh, never quite ventured into owning my own business. My father had a uh, window and door business that he started uh, back in 1948. I worked there from the time I was 12 years old. So I know all the ins and outs, but uh, I know when you come home every night and have to do the books and write the checks after you put in hours in the shop, uh, that's not exactly a, a, a pleasant life at times. Uh, but it's totally different lifestyle. Most of you know that probably. Are you ready for that complete commitment? Uh, you're going to have less time for your personal life and you're going to be risking some, most, or all of your assets. Uh, that's a big risk that people sometimes are willing to take, sometimes they're not. If you're willing to make these sacrifices, then you will overcome that first obstacle. Why do businesses fail? Well, one thing we find, if you don't have a business plan, if you don't have a road map on how you're going to get there, then uh, the first bump on the road might do you in. 
uh, business idea wasn't competitive. People have the wrong product or service. I have a one client I saw a number of years ago, and he had a new idea for a fishing reel. Well, that fishing reel cost more money to make than today's fishing reel. It didn't do anything any better. It just had a unique gear train that he patented. But, but uh, you know, it was hard to convince him that nobody was really going to pay more money for his reel that didn't do it, and you know, didn't catch fish any better. Uh, not financially feasible. You know, some people have a product that. Uh, they've invented, it may be a very good product, but it costs them as much to make it as people are willing to pay for it. I had some, uh, three fellows had gotten together on a dog exercise vest. You know, I'd never heard of this, but apparently for some dogs, they, they had a weighted vest that, that was put on the dog so it exercised them better. Uh, the problem was they were selling it for $80 and it cost them 75 to make it, so that, there wasn't any profit in it. Uh, they were wanting to raise the price, one of the fellows, but they said if they raised the price, people weren't going to buy it. If, if they dropped it to 50, they could probably sell 20, uh, twice as many of them. So what they had to do is find a production sewing source. They were doing a prototype type sewing operation and just costing too much money. But you know, many times you find things like that. Um, lack of experience in a specific business or industry. You know, one of the best things for succeeding is having experience in that industry. Uh, one of the things where pe a lot of people fail, I want to open a restaurant because I'm a good cook. Well, being a good cook, if you, any of you in the restaurant business know that doesn't mean you can run the restaurant. <laughs> There's a lot more to it than just uh, designing the menu and cooking the meals. Uh, poor planning and management. Many people start a business, uh, the one person business, and they try and expand it and they're really not good at managing people or they don't hire the right people. So those are things you have to look towards. Insufficient capital to survive the startup. This is probably the biggest item. Uh, you know, later in here we talk about the average storefront type business takes $80,000 to start up. Um, many people, if they have that much money, they put it all in the business and they have nothing to live on. So you have to look at what we call global cash flow. You know, what's it cost you to maintain your home, to, to uh, buy your meals, to buy your car, and to uh, also run the business and pay yourself something. Uh, what contributes to success? Well, if you have enough startup capital and maybe home base to begin with, that's one of the big things with the internet. Now it's possible to start businesses on the internet that don't take a lot of capital. On the other hand, uh, you know, I had one client who designed a line of um, diet supplements for people with cancer or people with other special conditions. He was a pharmacist, uh, worked full time at Beaumont Hospital, and he designed this line because he didn't like ones that were out there. He got something to make it, uh, got the formulations all set up, but now he wanted to go on the internet and sell it, and he had to put twenty to thirty thousand dollars into inventory so he could provide product to people when they did uh, want to buy the item. So you know, he eventually got, luckily, he had good credit and uh, kept his day job, if you will, and got a hundred thousand dollar loan from Chase Bank for it. But but he had to get that to start up. A passion for the business, that's the biggest thing. You know, if you're really passionate about that business and if you really want to do that kind of thing, then you'll probably find a way to make it work. It may not be the easiest way the first time. You may have to try two or three times, but people that are really passionate about a business will make it succeed. And if you have direct managerial experience, managerial experience in that business, in other words, start working in that business. If you want to run, if you want to own a restaurant, work in a restaurant. Don't go in just because you're a cook. If you, uh, my brother is an example, he has a window and door business. So he worked from the time he was a teenager in the window business and he worked for other companies for 10 years and he finally started his, well, 20 years I guess. And then he finally started his own business and, and was quite successful at it. A viable business plan. Again, the business plan is going to force you to put it down on paper. It's going to force you to analyze the numbers and say, can I really make money at this? And uh, it's got to be realistic. One of the things we spend a lot of time with people on is, is critiquing their business plans and trying to put reality in it. Many people put a business plan down, they project they're going to do $10,000 a week in sales, and they say from the beginning it's going to be $10,000. Well, you, those of you in business know it doesn't work that way. You start off at $10 or $20 or $30 and slowly build up. So that's part of the business plan is to show that acceleration and know you have enough money to cover your own expenses till the time you get up to a profitable position. That might take six months, might take a year, some cases two years. And SCORE can help, as I mentioned. We do a lot of 
work with people to say, oh, you need a business plan. We've got workshops to show you how to do that. We've got templates that will help you through that. But uh, when it's all said and done, we'll also sit down with you and critique the plan. We don't do the plan for you. We do, uh, we'll teach you how to do it, but we don't do it for you. So you need a vision of what kind of business you want to operate. What's your product or service that you're going to sell? Who is your customer? And you know, that's a very difficult thing to identify in some cases, very easy in others. I had a uh, woman with a beauty shop over in Redford Township, and she opened up and, and she'd had a business plan written by an outside organization and when she went to get a loan based on that, the, uh, the organization it's called Seed that provides microloans called me and asked me to talk with her because they just couldn't work with what the business plan she had. And, and she had a plan that said, yeah, I'm going to have uh, 10 customers a day from day one. And they laid out uh, potential customers as a 10-mile as a radius from where her location was. Well, people don't go 10 miles for a beauty shop unless it's really somebody they know and like. They're, uh, they're coming from the neighborhood, from the local businesses, and so we had to sit down and talk about how you're really going to market to those people. Uh, what are the customers' needs? How much are they willing to pay? Do you have a low price or and high value? Do you have exclusive features at a higher price? You know, what, what's your niche, if, it, if you will? What kind of service do you give? Is it self-serve or personal? You know, if you're running a barber shop and you're the barber, then uh, uh, you've got to be there to serve the people. Uh, is it scheduled or convenient? You know, can people just walk in the door or do they have to schedule an appointment for your business? To succeed, it takes more time per day than you will expend for an employer. I think you all find that, uh, you know, you work in a, a factory, an office, uh, work for somebody else, you're probably going to work eight hours, ten hours a day. You may spend a little time on your own with uh, looking after customers or something, but, but basically you've got a limited time that you spend with the business. When it's... Uh, your own business, then like my dad did, he would worked all day, 10 hours a day, come home at night and, and write out the purchase orders and sign the checks, and my mother did the books for the company. So uh, we had about an hour for dinner, and after that they went back to work. Uh, money, to survive, enough to survive a long time on savings, and you're slowly escalating income. So again, it isn't just the cost to start the business, it's having enough money to live in the meantime until it comes to be profitable. Um, owner's funds plus back, bank loans average $80,000 per year for the young firms. Well, again, that's, that's if you're talking a retail location, you know, if you can operate out of your home and operate part-time. I know one fellow has a, uh, a website business. He operates out of his home, has for 10 years, is very profitable at it, does some bartering as well as uh, direct sales, but he handles it all himself. He hires some part-time students to do some of the easier work and, and uh, contracts an administrative person. Sources of money, equity capital, equity signifies ownership. So the common sources are, of course, as you know, personal savings, as they say, family and friends and fools is the other one. Uh, partners contributions, so if, you know, one way is to have a, find a partner to work with you in your business. I have uh, five friends of mine that bought a tool shop. Uh, they were already in the machine tool business, were experienced in it, and they each put their factor in. One was, uh, one was in sales, one were in operations, uh, one fellow was a finance type, and so forth. So you need all those different talents, and if they're a partner in the business, they're going to be more dedicated to it than anybody. Uh, profits retained in the business. So, you know, it's a good way to grow a business if you can if that business is successful and it generates funding that you can expand the business. Debt capital, and of course debt does not determine ownership. If you're selling stock, in there, you've got equity capital, but, but with uh, debt capital, banks, uh, we bring up the SBA, they're a sponsor of us. And I, I do have uh, some of their resource books that talks about their uh, counseling, capital, and contracting. So any of you are involved in government contracting or any of you are interested in other organizations and SCORE, there's a lot of information here. Uh, microloans. There are several organizations that provide microloans around this area. They can go up to $50,000. CEED, CEED is the biggest one. They have offices around the city and um, they also have their headquarters in Livonia. 
Uh, credit cards, some people use those, it's not recommended. As you know, the, high, the rate goes up very high once you get through that first free period. I've heard some people that, that keep, uh, you know, getting one new card after another that's at zero percent interest, but some time it catches up to them. Uh, what's it take to succeed in business? As we talked some of those already, but uh, let's review some of that. Hard work, more than you ever put forward for an employer. Initially, you'll do everything. Planning, doing, ordering, cleaning, managing, selling, deciding, choosing, rejecting, and so forth. And as I mentioned with my dad's business, I, at 12 years old, I was out there sweeping the floors and gathering the sawdust stuff on wood windows. Uh, you got to work well with people. I think those of you in business know that. You know, you have to get along with your customers, your suppliers, your employees. Uh, and it requires a balance, and part of it's directing, part of it's listening to people, you know, trusting people. You've got to get employees you can trust. I'm sure if you've been in business any length like of time, you know that. Uh, we have one of our uh, mentors specializes in fraud as a business before he, he retired, and, and so he works with fraud, and, and you know they say probably one in ten employees is going to be robbing from you some way or another, so you really have to watch that and get people you can trust and the ability to delegate. That's part of the, and once you trust people, now you can delegate to them. You're gonna know do what they, what you ask them to, and then maybe they'll find a better way than you would even. Financial reports. This is a big one. A solid understanding of typical business financial reports. There's too many people that I've dealt with that have been in business 10 years, 20 years, and don't understand their books if they have them. Uh, you know, I had one fellow had a seating, specialized seating business for power boats. And he was doing quite well until things hit back in 2008, 2009. And suddenly he was in big trouble. He didn't understand his books. He didn't realize he had $65,000 in credit card debt. He had, uh, you know, his, his, there just was no cash flow. He was, uh, his building was about to be repossessed. And the, uh, the bank was attaching everything that he put in the bank. So he couldn't even deposit any money because they grabbed it right away because he owed it to them. So you got to understand. You got to keep those books. You got to understand the books. Uh, personal experience with my brother the same way. You know, he's has bookkeepers to take care of his books. He has a good CPA and so forth, but he doesn't understand the reports. So I have to sit down with him every month and explain what the numbers mean. Cash flow, cash flowing in and profits. You can draw a salary during your startup, but money flowing in profits are needed to fuel growth and beyond just by getting by and to allow you to grow and really reach your dreams. And of course, I don't know if we talk about it more in this presentation, but, but cash flow, as you know, uh, there can be very successful businesses, but they run out of cash. And when that happens, they're out of business. You know, if, if you've got a business that you're, uh, you're working jobs and paying wages and paying expenses, but not getting paid until the end of the job, that can be a real problem in, in a construction business or that type of thing. We recommend a support team. You should all have, you know, if you're starting a business, you should have an, uh, an attorney, an accountant, an insurance broker to go through your business insurance, a banker, uh, so, you know, get, get with the banker early on, wherever you have your checking account, get to know the bank people. And most banks now don't handle things at the local level, so you need to know their business bankers. Uh, management advisor, and SCORE can do that. You know, we're, the good thing is we're free, we're experienced. There are other organizations that do provide that kind of service. Some of them charge, some don't. A business plan. Again, we recommend that everyone have a business plan for their business and have a written business plan. It doesn't have to be 20 pages or 40 pages. Uh, most businesses you can have 10 pages and half of that is, is financials. Um, it's a roadmap to set up and track the company. It's a management tool that you can review each month and say am I where I said I would be. Uh, it's a selling tool for raising capital. So every bank, any organization that you go to for money is going to require a business plan. It used to be you could just walk in and if you had a business that was doing fairly well, they'd loan you money based on that, but not anymore. Since, since the recession, uh, everybody demands a business plan and we spend a lot of our time working with people in business who need a business plan in order that they can get a loan or get other financing. 
And quality is the key, not quantity. Again, it doesn't have to be, uh, we've got a template a Word document the score has, it's 31 pages long, but uh, you know, you can condense that to maybe five or six pages for what's really needed, and especially if it's just for you personally. If it's, it's, if it's your roadmap, it doesn't take a lot. If you're gonna try and sell to somebody else, it's gonna take more, and we can help you with that. So a good business plan has a marketing plan, how and why you'll bring in the customers. So that's a key part of this. You know, what you're selling and how you're going to sell it. Is it direct? Is it, is it internet? Uh, so forth. And then the financial projections that show you can make a living and even thrive in this business. In other words, uh, if you're just getting by, if you're only making twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year for yourself, then it's not going to work very well in the long term. You can do better than that working for someone else. So the marketing plan, a written marketing plan. Again, we need to write this out. Describes your product and service. How is it better? You know, why should I buy from you instead of the other fellow? Who's your customer? The price, the place, the company image. Uh, what's the required pricing to make a profit? Many times people uh, don't know how to price something. Uh, we get, a lot of times people have computer services of one kind or another, and they say, "How do I price this? This uh, my labor? If I can, can have a consulting business, how do I price myself?" And uh, that can be difficult. You know, you have to look at the competition, but you also have to look at what what's it take for you. If you're in the consulting business, you know, some high-end consultants get uh, uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a day. Others, uh, I think, my average was six hundred dollars a day when you're consulting. But, but some consultants work for much less than that in specialized areas. There's more competition. Uh, how do you get your message out? How do you win customers from the competition? You know, will you use social media? Will you will you do print advertising? Will you go on TV? The very expensive means in some cases, but it depends what you're selling. If you're selling pillows from Minnesota, I guess TV is pretty good because he's on all the time. Financial feasibility. We go through that. What are your startup costs? We have a, a again a template, an Excel spreadsheet that you can download from Score.org and uh, puts down all the things you have to consider in starting up your business, how much it will cost. You, you have to get those estimates, but at least it's a trigger to remind you what it's going to cost. You're going to have attorney's fees, you're going to have uh, closing costs on a building, maybe you're, maybe you're going to have uh, loan closing fees and so forth, along with your prepayment of utilities, insurance, and so forth. Uh, what are your expected revenues, and what expected costs would you have? In some cases, you know, the, the revenues <coughs> Uh, are going to rise slowly. The costs may be uh, reducing over time, but at the initial stages they tend to be expensive until you can buy them. In quantity for some items, you aren't necessarily going to get the best deal. Uh, you need a profit and loss statement so that you know monthly what your profit and loss is. You can figure that uh, daily or weekly even, but at least monthly. And then a cash flow statement. We can have a good schedule for that because if you're out of cash, you're out of business. For some businesses, that's very easy. For others, it's very difficult. If you're in retail, then yeah, you've got to buy that inventory. Uh, if you're like my brother's window business, then he requires a down payment. So once he gets an order, he's got enough money in there to pay for the windows when they're uh, when he purchases them. So he's a little bit of hacking. But then once you start installing the windows, so you're paying that help, and you don't get paid until by the customer until that's finished, or maybe it's 30 days later. And a balance sheet. Uh, you know that's. One of the basics that the uh, bankers like and you need to consider long term with what's your debt and equity and so forth, but, but uh, that's not the operating ones. I, I prefer the profit and loss statement, the cash flows being the things you must have and be looking at every, every uh, period of time, at least on a monthly basis. So in summary, to succeed, select the right business, which means ones you know, have experience in, have a passion for the business. Uh, know the market, research and learn your customers and competition. There's a lot of, we can help there too. There's, a, there's some excellent uh, databases available, whether it's the Census Bureau, there's a online Michigan electronic library, which anybody that's in the state of Michigan can use automatically from their computer, and it has three or four databases that will help you find out where your customers are, help you research locations for a business and so forth and uh, many other things. They have webinars to teach you how to use that. It's an excellent tool that uh, people can use right in their own bedroom, if you will. Um, choose a viable market niche. Avoid me too and price cutting. In other words, if, if 
you know, I, I suppose those of you that are involved in the gasoline business, you know, there's one that is, I, from what I understand, nobody makes money at gasoline. They make money on what they sell in the stores. It goes with it, but uh, that's, a, that's a problem. You know, it's such a competitive business, and especially in this area. Uh, define your market strategy, marketing strategy. So how are you going to go to market? Uh, are you going to do this through social media? Are you doing, going to do it through advertising, through, through radio, TV, uh, just word of mouth? You know, every business is a little different. And uh, if you're in the consulting business, you're going to market quite different than if you're in the retail operation. So again, to succeed, do research, stay up to date, learn from your customers and competitors. Uh, continuously improve, develop an edge, and you know, keep keep improving all the time. They claim that most successful business owners uh, read, uh, I forget the number, nine to ten magazines a week, just uh, business type articles and things. Build your experience, work at it, and learn from comparable businesses. So if you, uh, if you haven't owned that business, maybe you want to work in it. You know, people look, I want to start a hardware store. Well, have you ever worked in a hardware store? No, but I like building and hardware and so we'll go work in one you know we have one woman that uh, wanted to start a restaurant she went out and voluntarily worked at a restaurant in oak park for free but the people there agreed to they they let her work there for free but they rotate her through all the different assignments so she worked on each phase of that business and learned the business and she wasn't going to compete with them she was going to quite a different location but uh, we always tell people, you know, if you're going to be a competitor in this area, then maybe you want to go to Chicago or Cleveland or someplace like that, Toledo, and talk to business owners there, because I think you'll find most business owners like to talk about their business as long as they know you're not competing and taking their secrets. Uh, use counseling or mentoring. Use mentors and sounding boards. Leave pride at the door. We say, you know, you've got to be willing to sit down and bare your soul to these people in terms of of uh, here's my actual financial conditions, here's the way I see the business, here's my strengths and weaknesses. You know, you have to do some self-analysis. I don't think we talk about it here, but, but you really have to sit down and say, where are my strengths and weaknesses? We call it a SWOT analysis. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Do that on yourself and do that on your business. And use SCORE resources. Again, we're, we're free mentoring. Uh, once you you know, we have specialists in almost any area you can think of. We don't have any attorneys on board right now, but we do have people we refer to for attorneys. Uh, score resources, uh, Detroit.score.org. That's where you go if you want it. if you want mentoring. You can go there, and there's a, a tab there to request mentoring. You can see our uh, workshop schedule. You can sign up and and pay online for the workshops. Workshops go from twenty five to forty dollars. Uh, not expensive. Uh, other online mentoring, if you want some specialized advice, you can go to SCORE.org, the national website. They have online mentoring there. You can look at the resumes of the various mentors and then uh, converse with them by email. And they'll be back to you within 48 hours with answers to your questions. Again, I mentioned the business plan template. Uh, there's a whole series of templates there that you should look at if you're looking to build a business plan. There's also online, there's, uh, I think, two or three hundred workshops, webinars, and so forth that you can, you can take. All you do is sign up uh, with an email address, and you can take any of those for free. And uh, most of them, you know, are not at a scheduled time. They're available anytime you download them and, and uh, can work on the middle of the night if you want. Other resources, uh, federalresourcebusiness.gov, sba.gov, and again, I've got the, the SBA resources book specific to the state of Michigan here. Uh, state of Michigan, one-stop shop, and Entrepreneur Magazine I find very useful. The Kauffman Foundation has a whole series of things on entrepreneurship. They sponsor a lot of workshops and training uh, all over the country, and especially down at Tech Town here in Oakland County. Uh, again, I do have this... Uh, SBA, I've got a few copies of that, maybe 10, so if you'd want one, whoever gets them first. So with that, we'll go to questions. <clears throat> if, the, if you have a, if I have a business, and I need you to manage it, because I have another business, so I didn't have enough time to do the business, mm -hmm. can you do this? No. Uh, 
he's asking if, if uh, he's looking for someone to come in and manage a business for him because he could, needs to go to another business. We, we, uh, we don't specifically do work and uh, we're never paid. Okay, so you know we can't take a job with somebody that we're mentoring. Uh, what we can do is work with you for there's employment agencies. We have a couple of our mentors who actually used to run employment agencies and temporary health agencies, and and they could help with you know trying to find the right person, tell you where to go to look for the right person, and to interview people and so forth. So we can work with you on that. <coughs> yes, sir. Yeah, you you mentioned earlier that you uh, guys work with a non-profit and non-profit uh, organization and stuff like that. So what's the non-profit that you, you guys, you know, work with? Well, we, uh, you know, the, the SBA, by definition of the laws that created them, cannot work for non-profits, but we don't fall under those. We're a separate organization, and so we can help people set up a non-profit. We can help them with, uh, you know, the same as for-profit businesses have problems of, of how do I uh, improve the business, how do I grow the business. We have an excellent uh, online, you can download, and used to have some printed copies, but we're out of print now, but we do have a, um, some planning tools, strategic, strategic planning for nonprofits. We also work with um, University of Detroit, Father Phil Cook has come in the last year doing uh, Working with for-profit and non-profit, but, but communities are businesses that have a community good as part of their goal. So in that case, we've worked with non-profits. I, I've worked with them for a couple of years now. I have a woman that's out in uh, uh, Livonia, but she works in Detroit and so forth, and she works on rehabbing homes with uh, returning citizens, as they call the ex-convicts now. And, and uh, women, she works specifically with women and training them in the trades, so they help rebuild the house and then they buy it out over the years with, with least cost and so forth. Uh, we have another woman that uh, I worked with, the Father Phil's program that uh, has a Friends of Royal Oak Township organization that works with the Royal Oak Township to help uh, set up community gardens and uh, have community events and so forth. So all different types of nonprofits. Uh, you know, we don't work with the large nonprofits like the big hospitals that are nonprofits and so forth, but, but we have worked with a lot of small nonprofits. We had one woman had a bookstore, a uh, biblical bookstore, and, and uh, she was running as a for profit, and then she really had more things she wanted to do as a nonprofit, so actually converted it to a nonprofit, works with the Catholic Church there, and, and uh, uh, gets free help from people, the volunteers that come in and help her, and then a lot of the money they make goes to Africa to support some operations over there. So, so many different things, you know, it's the nonprofit world is uh, the only difference is, is uh, you call it a surplus rather than a, <laughs> than a, than a profit. But I worked uh, myself when I was in Cleveland, I worked, I was on the board of a hospital and on the executive committee and on the finance committee. So uh, you get to find out, you know, what's required there and what problems there are in running the nonprofit in that case. It was a small hospital, but it uh, was very well run. Okay, so what, can we like, uh, do we need to go to a website or can we set up a meeting for a... Uh... You go to our uh, website, detroit.score.org, and you can request mentoring, or it might be easier to shoot me an email. You've got my card, my email address is on there, lauren.greenwood at scorevolunteer.org. I pass some around there. Well, I've got more if you didn't get one. Uh, you come in late. Uh, but, but uh, you know, you can call me or email me, and then I can work to find someone that's, that's um, more knowledgeable in nonprofits. Cause, and I have some things I can send you, too, as far as strategic planning for nonprofits. I've got a, a presentation that was sponsored by the Kellogg Corporation, Kellogg Foundation, excuse me, uh, on, that our Kalamazoo chapter did. But there's also, um, you know, there, there's... Uh, where is it? I didn't mention this yet, but this is BizGrid. This is specific to the city of Detroit, but most of the organizations service uh, southeast Michigan or may service the whole country. And it was put together, this is uh, 80 different nonprofits that service small business within the city. Uh, we were part of that when they originally set it up. It's been about eight years now that they've been in operation. And they developed this BizGrid, which was originally a big chart to say who does what, because not everybody knows you know, 
who provides mentoring, who provides space, as you know, they have these co-working spaces like uh, Tech Town, Pony Ride, and, and uh, some of those, Green Garage, where there's uh, multiple businesses sharing small spaces and, and at relatively low cost. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of resources available. Uh, most, many of those are available to nonprofits as well as for-profits. Uh, I know there's one organization uh, called uh, Foundation for Community Resources, and basically they provide a lot of services and, and uh, manage grants, but they work strictly with nonprofits. They don't work with for-profit businesses. So, it, uh, you know, we can, we can guide you along the way if you're looking for something. I don't have the card, but I um, might got more room. So I can okay. bring contact one guy. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, I, have, I have questions about the company structure. So when you start new business, what's the advantage and the differences between the LLC and the ANG uh, S curve and the C curve? Well, what, what did you recommend for? Well, it's something we ask people to. Uh, Instagram? Did yeah. Repeat the question. Oh, me? yes. Uh, he's asking what's the. Uh, Structure. What's the LLC or S corp? What do we recommend, and so forth? We we don't recommend specifically. Uh, what we advise you is talk to a CPA or an attorney. But basically, most people are going to wind up with an LLC. You know, in certain tax instances, the S corp is to an advantage. When you have multiple companies, the S corp can be an advantage. But uh, you know, you really need to work that with a professional. Um, there's something now called L3C, which involves a nonprofit and a for-profit. Together, I don't even understand how that works, but I know it's out there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the most of our clients come in, and we say just just don't do it without the structure. Get something there to protect you, and an LLC is the simplest one to do. You can always change later. All right. Yes, sir. Full-time job and committing full-time to their business. When do people walk away from their full-time job and and make their part-time job a full-time business? Well, you know that's hard to say. I've got this one fellow I mentioned that has the food supplements, and he's still working full-time at Beaumont Hospital. It's, and he and his wife run the business, and uh, they have uh, the sales are run through a um, structure like some of these other organizations and. Amway and so forth, and so they don't spend much time with the business. All they do is have to ma you know, manage parts of it. Uh, other people, uh, you know, work strictly as a hobby. But but it it just depends. You know, you have to look at when does the business become profitable enough for me to st stop to quit my full time job, uh, and that may be different points for different people. Uh, the other hand, part of it is you know when do I expand the business? I, I'm working, I worked with briefly in, in down in Detroit on a, a forging, small forging operation, kind of an art metal operation. And you know, he's been in business five years and it, he's making just enough to get by on, but he really hasn't grown the business where he can have a nice profit and live a better life. And so now he's looking at how to expand that business and grow the business, both with uh, overseas sales and new op, a new f uh, facility and so forth. So, each business is different, all I can say. You know, working out that plan is important. Now that's, that's something we can work with you on. The business plan and the forecast, uh, work through that and say, when, when do I make enough money to support myself without working the other job? Yes, sir. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for that excellent lecture and a good discussion. And allow me to thank the Yemeni American Chamber of Commerce for nice work in this area. Thank you, Dan. My question do, do you really consider that small business an investment? It is just a created a career or created a job for the owner himself. And uh, thank you, Adi. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand, but... Do you really consider the small business an investment? It is just a created or uh, a created a job for the owner himself. Yeah. Yeah, well, does the investment just create a job for the owner himself? Well, 
Probably initially it does. You know, it depends on the business. If, if you're going to manufacture something, like my dad ran a window and door business, he had to have six to eight people working for him in order to make enough product to just to justify the sales. If you have a small uh, internet sales business, maybe it's just yourself at home. So every business is different. Uh, you have to make that part of your plan is, okay, do I need employees or can I do this on my own? Can I hire people as we go and expand or do I need a good sized crew to start with? If, if you're, you know, sure if you have a retail business, you're not going to be there 24 hours a day if you're open 24 hours a day. If you're open eight hours a day, maybe you're there all that time. But if you want to be open from eight in the morning till 10 at night, you probably need somebody else working for you. So each business is different. Uh, every business has its own difficulty, shall we say. Yes, sir. When uh, second question, uh, once a small business investment has become a successful, there is a profit remaining for the owners above or and beyond the amount taken out of the business in salaries and wages. Can the owners uh, reinvest the profit for the future expansion or they can declare its funding in the case of co corporation? Yeah, well, that again gets, you know, the question is, um, I, I take it, is when can you withdraw funds and when you, can you retain funds in the business, um, hopefully without paying taxes on them, but maybe you do. Uh, so every corporate structure, you know, that's where a C corporation and an S corporation may vary. And that, that, that's when you really need a, 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 an accountant, a CPA to sit down with and, and discuss how should we do this? When can I keep funds? When can I take funds out? The important thing is, oh, pay your taxes first. That's a, uh, we've had several people got in big trouble. Two ways you can get in trouble with the IRS nowadays pretty easily. One is not pay your taxes, of course. The other one is, is uh, work people as contractors when they're really employees. Uh, they're cracking down on that everywhere, and I've seen several businesses where they had to go back and, and pay significant amounts because uh, they had contractors that were really employees. They were telling them where to, when to work and gave them the tools to work and calling them contractors and just can't do that anymore. My question is like, uh, uh, what time you start to pay taxes? Like if you start the beginning, your business is the beginning this year. Is it like first year you have to pay or second year or is it based on how much money you make each year? Yeah, well, again, you need to work with an accountant, but, but uh, you know, there are certain things you have to pay. Uh, since, since you're not working for someone else, you have to pay your own Social Security, both halves of that. You have to pay the Medicare. So there's about 17% you pay just as, uh, you know, they don't call it taxes, but it is. It's Social Security and Medicare. And, and so that can be an expense. On the other hand, if you're losing money in the business, all your startup expenses and so forth can, can take away from some of that. So you have to look at, you know, what is a profit? It's your wages that you draw that you have to pay taxes on. Mm -hmm. If you have employees, then, you know, you've got to withhold their taxes and pay their Social Security. Those are important things. But when you're on your own, if you're not drawing money out of there, then you know, um, there's no taxes. <laughs> then if you are your own, okay. Yeah. It's when you have a profit and hide it that's a problem. <laughs> Yes, sir. Actually, I have an answer about it. It's about the, the company and uh, the structure. So, if it's LLC, you could uh, file at the end of the year and the schedule C and your personal the employee. But if it's uh, corporation, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, you could do it three, uh, three, three months quarterly, and you could pay the uh, pay the tax into the social security and then you get three, three months. So it depends what kind of company you have. Corporation. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know. It, if you, uh, it's good to have an accountant, a professional in the area that can help you with it, somebody that does your taxes, because uh, this can get you in trouble pretty easy. It's much easier to hire somebody for a short time and, and do that. I mean, a lot of people can do that. Uh, there's also the IRS, even though we may not like them in some cases, they have a lot of self-help things. There's a lot of, of information they can provide. They have some specialists we work with for small business who will, who will help you with certain problems and they're not 
They're not the agents that are going out looking to find people that aren't paying taxes. They're the people trying to help you set up things properly so you pay as little tax as possible. Yes, sir. If I want to start a franchise of a business that I currently have, um, do you guys mentor or help in that area where I'm not? Uh, so, so you wanted to, the question I guess is, is if I want to start franchising the business idea I have? Correct. Okay. You, so, you, can you guys help with that? You can. I don't have an expert in it, but we do have an, uh, you know, Detroit area. There are probably more franchises that are headquartered here than anywhere else in the country. And uh, we have an organization we work with called FranNet, and they help source people to uh, different franchises. So they'll take you in and evaluate you if you're looking to buy a franchise and say, you know, uh, does this person fit that? Do they understand what it takes? And they help match them up and the fee is paid by the franchisors. Now, those same people know some of these franchise lawyers and we know somebody would if they really need, you know, there are attorneys that specialize in just setting up franchises. Right, yes. And so you need to find somebody like that. We could help you find that person. We don't have any expertise in that ourselves. Yes. yes, sir. Sorry for the repeating questions. Uh, one thing uh, we noticed that that there is many small business uh, failed and closed. From your experience, what's the what's the problem, and uh, what is your recommendation in this area? Well, again, there are many reasons that businesses fail. Uh, many times people didn't have enough money to start the business properly. Many times they didn't uh, recognize the customers and know how to find the customers. You know, they set up the business in the wrong area for the business they had. Um, I've had some businesses where the, they had to put too much money into improving the building and leasehold improvements that they ran out of funds before they even opened the business. But uh, every business is different. Um, I, the thing I can say is that you make a business plan and you sit down with a mentor, be it a SCORE mentor or someone else that knows business, and you look through and critique this before you charge ahead. You know, I've had people that come in that they've got a lease on this restaurant location and they've got to be in there in two weeks. So they don't have much time for planning. I've had other people that said, you know, I want to start this kind of business after I retire in two years. So, so they got two years to plan ahead. So the question of how much time you have for planning, but you need to plan the business and recognize the pitfalls. And we've seen most of those. And I guess we've got other people that uh, have helped with that. You know, many people fail four or five times before they're successful in business. I have a quick question, but I'm wrong, but I just wanted to elaborate because you did show a slide showing the failure rate over a two year, five year, and yeah. ten year, and they actually grow uh, throughout the years. Um, what? I guess what statistical data was found to come up with that conclusion? That was a survey, uh, that's data kept by the Small Business Administration. So I don't know, you know exactly the criteria for that. I just know that it, it, it includes, you know, they, they don't track every business, so they have to look at it. When an LLC is formed, for instance, then if they go back in five years, is that LLC still there? No, it's not, then they assume it failed. But it could be that the LLC just, you know, merged into another company. So. Is that in Michigan, a certain demographic of some sort? That was that was nationwide. nationwide. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, is there any organization for that physical training for the physical studies or just start doing business? Is there any organization? Yeah, any, any organization. Yeah. Yeah. For the physical study how to start well you know we offer workshops okay. on how, you know one of those is basic how to start a business and how to market a business two simple workshops we we we, we uh, offer those usually every other month and then uh, we do a three part business plan but we also have a, you know a lot of training available online there's also an organization called the small business development corporation i think but SBDC and they have operations around the city. They are out in Livonia at Schoolcraft College. They are uh, down at Wayne State University. And they, they offer similar training to what we do, but they offer a lot more courses. 
They tend to be a little more expensive, but in many cases they're free too. So you, you just you have to look around. All, all kinds of business or specific business? Uh, generally, all kinds of business, but there's others that are specific. Uh, you know, how to start a restaurant is one that I've seen lately. There's uh, some people that, that uh, uh, right down the street here at the uh, Arab American Museum, there's uh, an uh, organization called Access that teaches women how to start a home house, home child care business and actually provide some funding for that as well. So, you know, a lot of different things. It just depends. Um, there are some organizations provide uh, how to start an art business, arts and crafts business. Uh, but uh, that's one of the things this, I'll leave some copies of this with Ben, but, but this biz grid talks about all the different services available for different kinds of businesses. So something to look through and see. It's, it's available online, you can go in there and, and inquire, but, but uh, there's a lot of training. You know, there's an organization, Sandler, that I know of, that, 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 that all they do is sales training. Uh, they have other organizations that, that uh, you know, train on, on IT, information technology, and so forth. So it just depends. Uh, luckily, we have Google nowadays, and you can find most of those things. Yeah. I have a friend, he has like a stores, like hardware stores, uh, material buildings, and he said, like, if he can organize uh, workshops, how to train your workers to deal with customers with different attitudes. You know, you get customers, nice customers, you sometimes bad customers. So what's your comment with that? You're like, how many workshops or how many seminars? Or yeah, how do you train uh, your, your, uh, train your employees to deal with customers? To yeah. deal with customers. Uh, coincidentally, we just started last month uh, two sales workshops. Mm. And one of those is taught by this fellow that, that uh, had his own ski shop out in Kiko Harbor and then went on the internet. And he developed this for his own employees. So he had to teach his employees how to sell. Can you go on our city? Can you go on our city? Yeah. Uh -huh. but, but so we started offering this last month, ran an initial pilot on it. And so we'll probably be offering that every couple of months now. But some, it's like I mentioned with the Sandler, they, they have people come in and train your people. It costs money. Uh, ours, you know, our, our workshop I think was fifty dollars or seventy dollars, but, mm. but uh, or for one session, for one, one session. workshop, if one you will. Workshop. Yeah, but we we maybe have with you know fifteen twenty people at that workshop. Although now another way would be to, to to have the workshop at your place of business for your employees. We could do that. Yeah. We we don't you know we usually don't do that because it takes too much too many resources. But uh, we could do that in some cases. Some some of the other chapters do that. They also have a lot of online workshops available that, that we could download and, and you could use to teach your own employees. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Lauren, uh, Mr. Lauren Green. What I want to appreciate everyone for attending, the viewers online. Um, I hope it was as beneficial as we anticipated it to be. So thank you very much, Lauren, once again. Thank you to, uh, to the chamber, and I really appreciate the opportunity, and we're glad to come back anytime. Thank you very much, and I want to appreciate all that had to do with the setup of this. Uh, I appreciate it. Shukran, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.